on this episode of Science. There we go. Three, two, one. Welcome to the show. I'm Nate Macon, and I'm a science teacher here at Skyview High School. Too often I've heard people wonder, mostly my students, why things work the way they do. If you take a look around, you'll see beauty in the simplest things. Today, we're coming to you from my classroom, and together with my students, we're going to try and answer that question, why? For many simple things that you see and feel every day but may not appreciate. Today, we're looking at gravity with a classic physics demonstration called the hunter and the monkey. It's not fair, but this guy, Chattels, is gonna get it. Let me show you how it's gonna work. So basically, we've made a simple cannon. And using basic concepts in physics, we're going to try to make this monkey wish it was never born. This demonstration targets the concept of gravity and gravitational forces. Our understanding of gravity began with Galileo in the late 16th century. It was further expanded upon by Isaac Newton, and later, Albert Einstein. For the purposes of our experiment today, we are going to use the Galilean definition that relates to objects near the Earth's surface. Galileo said that all objects, regardless of mass, will accelerate downward towards the Earth's surface at the same rate. 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. In our demonstration, two objects with different masses change their state of motion at the same rate. It sounds complicated, but basically, it's monkey whacking time. Now, I'm not stupid, and I know that I can't pull this off alone, so I'm gonna need some students to pull most of the weight. Physics team, assemble! We're gonna use this cannon to shoot this ball at that moment. Okay. Three, two, one! Yeah. Oh yeah. So how did this hit this? It's a basic principle in physics. Every object, regardless of mass, accelerates down towards the planet Earth at the same rate. 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. When we broke the circuit, the monkey fell. And the monkey fell at the same rate as the ball was falling. And despite the ball moving upward in its arc, it was still falling. They were both experiencing the exact same force. And that exact same force is the force of gravity. And regardless of mass, they all accelerate at the same rate. Gravity pulls harder on this monkey because it has a larger mass. And it pulls just hard enough to give it that acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And this ball, it's lighter. Gravity doesn't have to pull it as hard in order to accelerate it at the same rate, 9.8 meters per second squared. So really, as long as they are falling for the exact same amount of time, as soon as they are released, if they're released at the same time, they're gonna occupy the same space at the same time. So basically to shoot the projectile across the commons, we decided to use an air cannon. And so the basic setup of the air cannon is we've got a air tank made out of ABS plastic and fittings connected to a solenoid which is essentially a quick release valve that is operated by an electric current and basically what it is is it stops the air and as soon as there's a current applied it releases all the air which shoots out the barrel and sends a projectile with it. 
Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh. Well, to help hold the monkey up for the uh, projectile device um, project, we had an electromagnet at the top of the commons. And uh, to help that electromagnet, we had a circuit that would complete from the projectile to the battery and then up to the electromagnet. And to make sure that the monkey would drop the instant that the projectile was leaving the barrel, we had a wire that would complete the circuit at the edge of the barrel. And then right when that projectile is leaving, it's gonna hit this circuit off, or this wire off, breaking the circuit, causing the monkey to fall down. Okay, yeah. Three, two, one. Oh. Right through the legs. In the beginning, we missed some shots. And here's the deal. Science, while a very, very exact, can be tremendously inexact when it comes to making it happen, which is a lot of the reason why many people don't recognize simple concepts like all masses accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, it's, it's right on target. All right. Three, two, one. Oh, oh look at the on. legs. <laughs> So we had some difficulties. We had some difficulties aiming. Aiming is the key to this whole experiment. The angle of the ballistics device, the angle of the air cannon, has to be perfect. It is the only thing in this entire experiment that can't change. That cannon has to be aimed directly at the monkey. Three, two, one. There was a hit. Three, two. Yeah. That was a hit. Right in the face! Three, two, one! Three, two, one! Yeah. Yeah. Trial and error. All right, so we took a couple of shots, we missed, we adjust, and then as soon as we were right on, we were right on, we didn't miss. Boom, right in the face! Right in the face! Today, we really only showed you the finished product and described it in very basic conceptual terms. So if you would like to know more about the mathematics and physics proof behind the hunter monkey experiment, please visit the Vancouver Public Schools YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Today's famous scientist is Isaac Newton, arguably the most influential scientist of all time. You may recall that I mentioned him earlier in the show along with Galileo and Einstein. Now what you may know about Newton is that his inspiration for his insights of gravity involved a story about an apple falling from a tree, and in many renditions hitting him on the head thus provoking this world-altering idea that gravity not only works on objects that are close together, but also objects that are very, very far apart. You may also know his three laws of motion, and the fact that he's credited with inventing calculus, which in the world of math and science is equally monumental. But here are some things you may not know about Newton. Newton's scientific contributions did not stop the laws of gravity, motion, or even calculus. In fact, Newton contributed all the major sciences in various ways. One such contribution was his investigation into the behaviors of light. He was one of the first scientists to assert that as light moves through one substance to another, it changes speeds in very small amounts, thus causing it to bend. This is called refraction and can be easily seen when light strikes and passes through a prism. No wonder so many science geeks love the dark side of the moon. Newton, Pink Floyd thanks you. Newton was tremendously involved outside of science as well. He held a seat in British Parliament, was knighted, and attempted to turn lead into gold, a process known as alchemy. Unfortunately, Newton was not able to make gold out of anything he wanted. And if Newton couldn't do it, neither can you, M. Night Shyamalan. But perhaps the most entertaining story about Newton is that for several years he was a high-ranking official, and later the master of the British Royal Mint. Uh, not that mint. I mean the treasury. That's what I'm talking about. He was tasked with finding, arresting, and convicting counterfeiters. Newton was like Serpico, James Bond, and Clarence Darrow all rolled into one. During his time, he racked up 28 counterfeiters, which is a pretty impressive number. Take that, evildoers. Newton's accomplishments are numerous, but what's most amazing is that he didn't become truly famous in terms of the broad population until after his death. 
Only then did others outside of the scientific arenas really recognize his tremendous body of work, both in and out of science. In fact, it would take you quite a while to write down all of his accomplishments. But don't worry, you've got time. Newton didn't predict the end of the world till 2060. So now's the point of the show where we give you, the viewer, an experiment that you can do at home. Today I have Tyler and Cody, two of my physics students here at Skyview High School, and they're gonna go over a basic principle of physics, is that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Guys? So the experiment we have today for you is gonna be shooting a bottle rocket off. Uh, the materials you need for it are a two liter bottle, or just a liter bottle, uh, some kind of tubing, we use PVC pipe to attach to the bottle and attach to a rod which you're gonna stick in the ground or have a base. Um, a rubber stopper which you're gonna stick in after you fill it up with, or before you fill it up with water. And then a hand or bike pump that you're gonna stick up through the rubber stopper to pump it up and to release the pressure. To begin, you wanna fill the bottle with about, with about a fourth of the way full of water and then you wanna pump it the rest of the way with the bike pump and then as the uh, pressure builds, the uh, pressure will release the stopper and the bottle will launch. It's simple as that. <laughs> that worked pretty well. <laughs> that even shocked me. <laughs> I was like, where did it go? I didn't realize it would go so that was, I'm like, that was, what? that was pretty good. <laughs> oh. So here's the point of today's experiments. It doesn't matter what the object is, a ball, a stuffed monkey, or a two liter bottle. All objects experience the same acceleration due to the force of gravity. Time now for the science mailbag. Your chance to ask me a question about science. The first letter comes from Stephen. He says, Mr. Macon, why did you pick physics over the other sciences? Well, Stephen, Here's the deal. Physics was the why for me. Before physics, I was a pretty mediocre student. I didn't find inspiration in anything that was academic. And uh, I'd go to math class and I would always wonder why. Why am I doing y equals mx plus b? Why am I doing you know, the quadratic formula? And physics provided an avenue for me to understand why those things are used every single day. And it was enlightening. It was fascinating. It, it, it woke my brain up and gave me motivation to kind of ask that question why in a lot of different other arenas. And it's funny you say that, that, that why would I pick it over other sciences. Um, the other sciences are just other forms of physics. And yeah, there's one form of physics or another and different topics within physics that I like or prefer more than another one. But more or less, it's all about asking that question why and trying to find a suitable answer. If you would like to ask a science question, you can email me at scienceshow at vansd.org. Well, we're about out of time. I'm Nate Macon from Skyview High School, and I want to thank you for watching. And I also want to remind you that no monkeys were harmed in the filming of this show. 